Hello, everybody. Brandon Jones here. I'm joined by Mr. Kyle Bossman. I love trailers. Mr. Daniel Bloodworth. <laughs> hey. Well, if you love trailers, I got good news for you, Kyle. What's up? It's Gamescom. And this is prime <laughs> trailer hunting territory. It really is. Uh, yeah, lots of awesome videos we want to talk about. Uh, too, too many, really. I mean, more than we really have time for. And so, you know, a lot of times it's tough to not talk about the games you want to talk about. We talk about specifically the trailers that will uh, create good conversations. Uh, specifically, the first one I want to talk about is uh, the the gameplay premiere of the Fighter Squadron mode coming to Star Wars Battlefront. Yet another reason for me to be incredibly excited about this game. Curious if you guys are excited as well. Many times, Kyle, we have discussed the the expansion trailer. Uh, all you have is gameplay, uh, probably from multiple gameplay sessions. Uh, you want to make it look theatrical, but you also want to make it look realistic. You want to make it look like these are uh, feats that you can any player can achieve in this game. You know, you yourself can have this fun experience that you see these other players having. We get the vibe that you know these are also this is rebels fighting the empire, but these are also just you know people have playing fun, playing fun video game and having a good time. But it's really the build, I think, that is done really, really well. Again, we've talked about this before, but specifically just upping the ante. Introduced to the TIE Fighters, and then the X-Wing, and then the A-Wing, and then the Falcon, and then finally uh, uh, Slave 1. I love it. What do you think, Kyle? I, I love this trailer, too. Uh, obviously, there's less to show than previously, because we're, we're in ships the entire time. Uh, so there's something, uh, I guess, inherently a little less exciting about this trailer than those we've seen before. Uh, but, Brandon, the way you opened this was so perfect, is that... Yeah, you do. You do. You you feel like we see the rebels and the Imperials fighting each other, but also you see someone playing a video game. It's incredible. You see that both in one trailer, uh, and like you said, uh, gives you the impact of something you could do. And these first-person uh, uh, elements of this trailer, I think, are so good and so important of just seeing what it's like to be in that ship ourselves. We actually get lots of different perspectives too, which I yeah. think is one thing that yeah. they do really well. Like we get, uh, they take care of the cinematic requirement. You know, we get lots of different angles of all the different ships that we get into. Uh, we see things from first person. We see the interior of a Tie Interceptor, of the X Wing, of the Falcon, of an A Wing, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we also see third person shots. They do a little bit of both, kind of like how Grand Theft Auto will sometimes handle like their gameplay. We're like, yeah, sometimes you're watching the engine running, but you're not necessarily seeing actual HUD up gameplay, and then they might drop some shots in there. And I thought that was all balanced pretty well. What do you think, Mr. Bloodworth? What do you think is throwing me off? Star Destroyers, like, floating above the atmosphere? Is that Does that happen? That's It's happening. It's happening. Okay. There, I, could, I would never question this game's canon. You know what I mean? This game right, knows right, better right. than any of us do. <laughs> I, I, I do like that they move back and forth between uh, first person and third person, even though I think the vast majority of people are going to play in uh, third person. Especially, you know, you just you just need that peripheral vision, man. You you got to see what's going on around you, not just straight in, straight ahead. But from what I hear, it's the just the click of a button. Yeah. And so you no, know, it should it, be. It, it, it has wanna, been in past you games. You might want to pop in just for just for kicks, just to kind of see what it's like. And especially mm -hmm. the Falcon. I mean, who doesn't want to do that? Yeah, I, I don't know how much of that uh, that dialogue you will you will hear from NPCs and stuff. But but they did a really good job of like stringing it all together. Uh, the only one that was just kind of. I don't know. It's, it's weird because it's, it's it's like fan service, but it's also a, a little bit cheesy to hear. Is, is Han saying, "Don't tell me the odds"? Yeah, you know? of course, absolutely. <laughs> fan service for sure. I think it works pretty well altogether. I think some of this dialogue is probably in game because imagine you're not in that A wing. Like imagine that A wing is a power up. Is something that you you know pick up on the battlefield, or you've gotten so many kills that you've earned the ability to switch yeah. to an A wing. Or maybe you know the the option to pick an A wing pops up. And so when you die and you maybe pick a new ship, you know, uh, for example, in the old Battlefront games, when like the, the bad guys would show, or, or, or the, any of the heroes would show up, it would say like, Darth Vader is into the battlefield. And so like, that's a, a prompt to let you know, kind of like Titanfall, like we're losing the battle guys, come on. Like it just like, yeah. this this new element has been added to the multiplayer battle, but it's done in the vein of a A-wing pilot or an X-wing pilot calling for an A-wing pilot to kind of set up the context of, so when, even though if you're in an X-wing right in the dogfight and you hear that, like we need A-wing assistance, it's like, oh, here come the A-wings. Like, bet you didn't see that coming. Like, maybe that's Han's intro line. Like, when the, you know, when the, the Falcon comes in. It's all part of it. It's all part of just, like, the feeling like you're in Star Wars. 
I, uh, I might go a little overboard here, guys, just uh-huh. because um, <laughs> I, I've been critical of, um, I can't remember off the top of my head what I've scored other Star Wars trailers, but like I've been critical because of what they're actually selling. Like There was that one mode oh, uh, where right. you see the guys fighting, they got to take down the, AT, uh, the AT-AT, and then the Y-Wings come in, and you're wondering, like, do we pilot the Y-Wings? Oh, that was the first trailer. Uh, the first gameplay trailer, yeah. yeah. And, and so uh, there's just some questions that pop up from a lot of the trailers that they've done. I have no questions about this. I feel like I get it. I feel like it's done in a perfect amount of time. Uh, I love the energy. I'm usually very critical of the music that they use in Star Wars, and I think they very cleverly we go from the Death Star battle to the asteroid chase. Like they they grab a lot of uh, good tracks uh, that represent the different people. I think the ending is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I'm giving this a 9.6. I think this wow. is stellar. Holy I, cow! How could they have better sold this? I can't. I can't think of it. I think this is. Awesome. I, th- I think it is such a great way to sell this mode. I think any more would be too much, any less would be too little. Um, it, uh, I just, Bloodworth hadn't seen it with volumes. So I just showed it to him right before we started, and hair stood up on my arms. So it was just like, I love this. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it speaks directly to me. And so, I, if I was not into Star Wars, it'd probably be like a 9 or a 9.1, but uh, this rang my Star Wars bell. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we've, we've discussed Star Wars points a little bit on the show before. You definitely get some points just for your source material. Uh, I'll give it a 9 and then bump it down 0.5 because of pre-order now at the end. Uh, so it's an 8.5. Uh, but yeah, this is a great trailer. Uh, uh, you're right, Brandon. It sells a mode, and which is hard to do, and we all get the mode. Uh, but yeah, I, you're done with trailers. You don't need any more. You're good to go. You're, you're all set for November. It also rushes right into it, which I think yep. is great. You know, it just you see the ship go and take off, and then boom, we're right in the middle of the battle. They actually pick a, a track from the you know the Star Wars series that's very quick to kind of jump right into the action. Oh, and that shot um, when you do, it's full. It's a sky full of other spaceships I want to destroy. So I, I like that we don't get some kind of weird person explaining the mode to us or, you know, some weird kind of story context beforehand. We do get a little context as far as what the mission is. You know, we, we are introduced to the shuttle. we got to take it down. We know what the stakes are. You know, and when we see Han at the end, it's like, oh, come on, Han. And then you're like, oh, I guess Rebels win this one. And like, nope, here comes here comes mm-hmm. Boba Fett. It's, yeah. it's just got absolutely everything. It, it puts a smile on my face even just talking about it now. But you can still give it an 8.52 blood if you want that. <laughs> I won't hold it against you. <laughs> Uh, I think I'll give it an 8.8. I do think it, it, it run like, yeah, it runs really smoothly throughout, uh, and, and it does feel like you're actually essentially watching how a match is going to play out, which I think is, is important. Uh, I don't feel like, uh, yeah, I, I don't feel like seeing, uh, the Falcon come in is, is that as exciting of a turn, if, if I could say that? It, it, it's not like this, oh, this mind-blowing thing happened in the match, like, okay, well, here come, here comes Han, so... It gives a good impression of what it's going to be like to play a match, um, you know, even if it's with, uh, you know, far more competent people than you will ever find in real life. Yeah, it's kind of like the helicopter in Battlefield. It's like someone's going to unlock the Falcon and then fly it straight into a volcano. And you're like, thanks, buddy. Um, but I mean, again, just drawing comparisons or thinking of how bad this could have been, you know, I imagine some on screen demonstration where she's like, and that's true. You can also pilot everyone's favorite Carillion cruiser, the Millennium Falcon. And it just, it, he just shows up, you know, it just, yeah. and it actually, in kind of this interesting, like, explosion reveal where he kind of comes up, you know, vertically through this explosion and shows up. And like, bet you didn't see that coming. I'm like, yeah. You obviously did. I mean, it's not like, especially because they teased it uh, at the end of the last Battlefront trailer, specifically this map, um, which is also kind of exciting that we kind of pick up where we left off. Like the last thing is we saw the Falcon heading out into this this battlefield on this lava planet, which I really need to commit to memory. Uh, cue <laughs> corrections music. I always forget the name of this planet. Um, but uh, you guys dropped it into the eights, but my score dropped it brought it up to an uh, an eight point nine point six 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 six. Well, oh, I will, right. which I will up to a nine point oh. Sure. Kyle's original score. <laughs> if if it's uh, too high for you. You guys at home understand I'm a big Star Wars nut, and this is my darn show. So that's that's the way it's going to be. Star Wars and Batman <laughs> trailers and Disney trailers mm-hmm. will all will all be uh, slanted in one direction. I, I think this is real smart for this for this for this team for Dice for EA to to be as concise and specific, really focus all of your energy on gameplay. Like this is a very gameplay focused video, uh, and I and I dug it. An excellent sell. 9.0. Good job, guys, and uh, we'll see you next episode. Lots of Gamescom stuff still to cover. Stay tuned.